All right, everyone. So the Eagles and the Falcons are going head to head on Monday Night Football. This is going to be a big game. And for both teams, I think this is a game they really got to win. So the Eagles are going to be without A.J. Brown. So keep that in mind when you're, um, you know, considering what to bet in this game. So we're going to start with the betting odds. The Falcons are plus five and a half. The Eagles are minus five and a half. The total for the game is over 46 and under 46. The money line for the Falcons is plus 200. And the money line for the Eagles is minus 245. So as we always do, we're going to go through and give you the argument for both teams, okay? So for the Falcons, this is pretty simple. They need this win, okay? They really, really need this win after losing week one. Falling 0-2 in a division that looks like it got a lot better than last year. Now, we don't know for sure yet, but the Saints look better, right? The Bucks look maybe even better than they were last year. I know the Panthers still don't look great, but the fact that there's already two 2-0 two teams in this division causes some real, real problems um, for the Falcons in terms of being able to kind of struggle early. Now, the reason that I think that they could figure things out is because two things. The first is we have five and a half points they're giving us, right? So if this game is an ugly, ugly game, we get five and a half points to consider. And I think that does a ton, a ton of stuff for us. The second thing is the story of week two was a lot of people that looked not so great in week one really found themselves in week two. And this was especially the case for players who were injured last year who came back. So just to give you two quarterbacks we're talking about. So Joe Burrow's one, right? Joe Burrow looked horrendous week one, looked pretty good against the Chiefs. So he might be back. You know, maybe he just needed that one game um, to kind of get back into the feel of things. The second one is Daniel Jones. Daniel Jones looked like he couldn't play football in week one. I mean, he just looked terrible. And in week two, I know it was against the Commanders, but in the, and I know the Giants lost, but he looked better. Okay, He was moving the ball well. He was throwing to the right spots. He was making clear you know, decisions. So we'll see if that continues. But the point is, there's a little bit of um, evidence here that Kirk Cousins isn't going to look like he did in week one. And if he doesn't look like that, this Falcons team is going to be ready to go, right? This is a team that could certainly cover a five and a half point spread. So I think that's the argument for the Falcons. Not only are we getting the points, but Kirk Cousins is probably going to look a little bit better than he did in week one. So you add those two things together with them needing a win. You know, there's a strong argument for the Falcons. Now the Eagles at minus five and a half, they're another, you know, important team to look at here because although the NFC East, you know, doesn't necessarily look like it's going to be setting the world on fire this year, especially the bottom two teams, the Commanders and the Giants, they could go up 2-0. I mean, if, after all of this stuff people talked about last year, after kind of the struggles they had early in week one, they could find themselves 2-0 in the season and you're at home. And I know they're going to be without A.J. Brown, but you added Saquon Barkley, you still have Devonta Smith, you have, you know, that front line of the de on the defensive end, and you have Jalen Hurts. If you can't figure out a way to take care of business at home with that group, I don't know what to tell you, right? The, the, the lack of A.J. Brown is just not going to be enough of an excuse here for them to lose this game at home. Now, we're going to have to see because one thing we, you know, looking at that Packers game, there's two things that we took from it. Number one, you know, the Eagles overcame some pretty severe adversity early, right? They could have crumbled right there. But the second thing is not favorable to the Eagles, and that is that the field conditions were so bad that a lot of this stuff, we don't really know what we saw, right? Is Saquon going to be quite as dominant in, you know, in this game? I'm not sure. And obviously, he's, we're not saying that he has to score, you know, what would he score, three TDs in that game? He doesn't have to do that, but he does have to show just a little bit, right, that he's going to be just as important to this team as he was in that first game, because I think there's a lot of questions about everything, you know, in that first game. So I think there's a strong argument for him just because they're more talented, I think, than the Falcons. You know, I know the Falcons every year we talk about all the talent they have, but it's really unproven talent. The Eagles have proven talent, right? The Eagles have talent like Saquon Barkley, Jalen Hurts, Devonta Smith. These are guys we just know are big time players. And I think if Kirk Cousins isn't a big step up, right, like let's say Kirk Cousins looks like he did in week one, this spread is going to be an easy cover for the Eagles. If Kirk Cousins looks like he did in week one, there is going to be a problem in Atlanta. They have no shot of winning this game. They have no shot of winning this game because there's two reasons for that. Number one, they're going to need him to produce. That's one. 
But two, the second part of this, if he looks like that, it's probably likely that that offensive line looks terrible. And if the Eagles defense is able to cook a little bit, if the Eagles defense can make some plays, this offense will be more than able to, um, you know, take care of business. So now we're going to look at the total. Now, this is a game I think is going to be super, super ugly. Um, so I would lean the under. We're not going to be playing the total, but I would lean the under here just because I, I don't see the, both these teams putting up a ton of points, to be completely honest with you. I think even though you could, there's questions about the Eagles' defense, I think a lot of times in the NFL, it's more about how crisp is the offense. You know, like, not, not to say there are, there, there are elite defenses that shut down basically everybody, but then there's other defenses that they can make plays, they can make your life miserable, but if your offense is not clicking, if you're not sharp, even these bad defenses can get away with things, right? And, and I think on both sides here, that might be the case, right? Like there may be a little bit without A.J. Brown of the Eagles struggling. If the Eagles can't get that, you know, crazy run game going again this week, are they going to be able to put up the same amount of points? I think there's a chance this could be ugly. I think you're, you can see some fumbles and some interceptions, you know, from both sides. And in that case, you know, we would see the under. And I also think if the Eagles do blow out this team, well, if they blow them out, the Falcons probably aren't going to score a ton. So we're not looking at that, right? We're not looking at that as something that's going to send it over because the Eagles could score 30 points. And if the Falcons put up three points, the under is safe by a long shot. Okay, so now we're going to go to the money line. So the Falcons money line at plus 200, I think this is definitely playable. You know, five and a half is a good number in terms of we're getting a lot of points. But it's not really a good football number. You know, good football numbers are kind of around the seven and a half, right? That's where we would want this. Because then you're like, all right, if this game is a touchdown game, I got it at that seven and a half. So they need to, this is a two touchdown lead they need to have at the least, right? They need, to, or I shouldn't say two touchdown, but two score lead at the least. Um, now, five and a half, once again, it doesn't mean five and a half is also a good number in the sense that if it's a 10 point lead and, you know, the Falcons came down and scored a late touchdown, you're covering. So, so I do get that, but I just think five and a half isn't a great number. And that's why I do like the money line as a play. If you believe in the Falcons, if you believe in the Falcons laying it on the money line, I think it makes a lot of sense because now you're saying, all right, I think the Eagles are going to struggle. I don't love the five and a half because it's not giving me that football number. It's saving me from a field goal, but not saving me from that touchdown lead. So take a risk with the plus 200 um, on the money line here. So the Eagles money line, you know, you, you could have put it in a parlay or something like that. You could have teased the Eagles, although a lot of people say don't tease over zero and you're kind of teasing over zero here, but you can get a money line play with the Eagles at that. But I just don't trust the Eagles money line here. You know, look, you're giving your five and a half points. If the Eagles win this game, I think it's going to be big. So just take the minus five and a half, you know, never mind playing around with the money line. So thank you all for watching. As we always say, never gamble what you can't afford to lose. No profit is guaranteed. We are just giving you our thoughts on the game. So thank you all for watching.